Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sherriette Finley. I'm one of your online advisors for the University Advisement Center online here at Perimeter College at Georgia State University. Um, today we have a very special presentation for you. Our online librarian, Mr. Jason Puckett, is here with us today to share some valuable information with our students. This is information that you can use to be more successful in your, in your courses. Um, Jason has a lot of information to share with us. As we go throughout the presentation, you are welcome to, to ask questions. If you would, type those questions in the chat box and we'll make sure that we take time to answer them as we go throughout the presentation. At this time, I am going to turn the presentation over to Mr. Jason Puckett. Jason, thank you so much for joining us today. It is my absolute pleasure, Sherriette. Good afternoon. Um, so, uh, hi. Uh, we've got a small group today, but I know we are uh, recording as well. So. Uh, uh, I, I hope this is going to uh, be useful to everybody who's uh, either attending in person or, or watching the recording afterwards. I thought I would uh, start just by introducing myself and tell you a little bit about uh, my background here at GSU just for a second and um, uh, w what I do here at GSU and how I can help you as an online student. So that's me. Hi. Uh, my title is Online Learning Librarian. Um, among other hats that I wear at the library, I, I support the online college and students who are enrolled in the online programs. Um, I do a number of other things. I'm also the librarian for the uh, anthropology department downtown. Uh, I am stationed at the Atlanta campus, but I'm out at perimeter one day a week. I do some other stuff. I teach the Zotero bibliography software, and I've got my my hands in a lot of different uh, a lot of different uh, uh, interesting projects at the library. What we're interested in today, though, uh, is uh, is what you can use as an online student. I thought I'd take as my focus for our talk today uh, library resources that you can get to without leaving your house, without actually coming to a campus. Um, whether you are you know, actually in the Atlanta area and just enrolled in online classes, or whether you are geographically distant from campus, there's a lot of library resources that you can use uh, just as though you were sitting on campus. And it's part of my job to help you to the best of my ability to get access to the stuff that you need in, in the same way that you would if you were uh, physically located on campus. So uh, that's what I'm going to cover today. We, I've, I've got sort of a, a, a lot of um, we're, we're going to take a quick tour of a lot of different library services. This is going to be a sampling just to give you an idea of the range of library services that you've got access to as a, a, an online student. Um, this, I'm not going to go super in-depth into any one thing. You'll be getting a lot more library information in your classes. Um, but really my goal for today is I want to um, uh, I really want to show you the range of, of uh, types of resources that you've got access to uh, just to make you aware that they exist and um, make sure that you know how to get help with them over the course of your career as a, a GSU student. And so I've got lots of, uh, lots of places we, you can get help. I'm going to finish up with that after I show you uh, some things about searching for eBooks and getting access to online videos and, uh, and things like that. So. Um, I've been at GSU for about 10 years here. I've, I've served in a number of different roles. Uh, Sherry Ed and I were chatting before the, uh, the actual uh, recording started, and I mentioned to her that I've actually been an online student myself in addition to being a GSU alum. Uh, I got my, uh, my library degree from Florida State in an entirely online program. I never set foot on the Florida State campus. So I've really got, uh, I think, a pretty good perspective on what you'll need as an online student and uh, uh, what kind of resources you might want to uh, be able to get to. So um, that's my contact information. I'll give it to you again at the end. And that URL is a uh, web page that I'm going to show you that I've put together with some resources that will be uh, useful to you over the course of your online career at Georgia State. Okay, so let's dive in. This is what I want to cover today. Um, 
I'm going to cover as much of this as I can in the, in the course of an hour. Uh, like I said, we'll, we'll dip into each of these things just a little bit, and I'll give you some quick demos just to, to kind of show you where these things are, what, what kinds of uh, uh, options you've got for getting hold of things. We're going to talk about actually finding online research resources uh, for your papers and your assignments. Um, that's going to involve uh, looking at the library catalog, which is uh, where you'll get things like ebooks, you'll get uh, streaming videos that way. Uh, we'll look a little bit at library research databases. You will primarily use those for getting hold of journal articles, and I'll show you how to get to those, how to choose one, how to get to the actual articles. Uh, we'll do a little bit about how to search and just to kind of give you an idea how the process works. Um, once we've done kind of some of the, the research related stuff, I want to talk uh, with you just a bit about some of the uh, off campus services that the library can offer you. Um, we've got interlibrary loan where we can get items from other libraries. We've got a service called uh, document delivery or desktop delivery where we can actually, if you're an entirely online student, you can get uh, articles and, and chapters from items in the library collection scanned and sent to you. Um, and then I'm going to show you around a little bit around the, the library website where you can do things like chat with a reference librarian. Uh, we've got some research guides online uh, for your classes or for uh, subject areas that you're studying, uh, things like that. And then if there are any questions, I'm, uh, I'm more than happy to take questions as we go. Just feel free to type them into the chat box and I'll, I'll pause again at the end and, uh, and see if anybody's got any questions uh, as they come up. But uh, feel free to ask as we go. Okay, so the li using the library, uh, using the library's online resources can be complicated at first. It can be intimidating. I just want to stress that we, the li your librarians, know that this can be complicated and intimidating at first, and we're here to help. Don't panic. Please, please don't be shy about asking for help. The, the earlier in the, the semester, the earlier in your assignment you ask for help, uh, the better we're going to be able to help you out and offer you more options. This is, I broke down just a couple of uh, the main resources we're going to be talking about today. And we'll get in and do some live searching in just a second. This isn't going to be all slides. Um, I'm going to actually show you how some of this stuff works. But um, just to give you an idea of, of sort of a rough breakdown of what you would use some of the library researches, uh, resources for. Our catalog, we call it Gill Find as well. And the, the URL is there. I'll show you that in a minute. Catalog, for the most part, you're going to use the library catalog to find uh, books. And for online students, that's usually going to mean ebooks. We've got not everything available in ebook format, but we've got a lot of stuff available in ebook format. Um, and I'll show you how to search specifically for ebooks. Uh, the other thing you may find, uh, you may be using the library catalog for, is streaming videos. There's other ways you can get to streaming videos too, but we've got stuff that uh, is not going to be available to you on YouTube and so on. Um, there are other things that you can use the catalog for if you are close to a, a campus that you can use in person, if you're close to a, a physical library that you can use in person, you'll be using the catalog for finding books, DVDs, other physical items, things like that. And you can use any campus library. It doesn't matter what campus you're enrolled for classes at or if you're an entirely online student. As long as you're a, a GSU student, you can use any of the GSU campus libraries, downtown, Decatur, Dunwoody, doesn't matter. Uh, you will not find articles in the library catalog. So for articles, you're going to go to what we call a database, which is sort of a specialized search engine for finding research articles. I will, of course, we'll, we'll talk through what's involved in that as well, and I'll show you some, uh, some examples of that. Um, you can get some streaming videos through our databases as well. Uh, Canopy, Swank, there's another one called Films on Demand. Um, I'll talk about how all that works. One really useful thing to be aware of is that um, if you're not sure where to start searching, if you've got an assignment, you need to find books, articles, anything like that, we've got a search tool called Discover that's on the library homepage. I will show you how to get to that. That's your best starting point. If you're really just not sure where to start, it's got some of everything in it. It's kind of a good all-purpose search tool. So. 
Um, let me exit out of my slides here. We'll look back at that slide in just a second. And I'm going to hop into my web browser and uh, show you around some of the stuff that I'm talking about here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I didn't mention I'm getting over a cold. If I uh, go quiet for a second, it might be because I've, I've muted my microphone, so I'm not coughing in your ear. So I apologize for that. Um, so there's a lot to take in here on the library homepage. This is our website. It's library.gsu.edu. There you go. I pasted it into chat. Um, this is really a, a, an important thing to bookmark, have available for your research as, uh, as you're working with GSU. This is going to be sort of your, your starting point for um, just about anything research related that you do as far as uh, using the library goes. We've tried to put everything up sort of front and center as much as we can on the, web, on the website, but there's a lot here and it's, uh, it's easy to, to not be sure what you're looking at. So uh, hopefully by the time we're, we're done talking today, all of this will be a little clearer. Um, some of this stuff like the chat box and things like that, I'll talk through a little more towards the end. What I want to talk about first is the library catalog. You can see we've got these tabs across the top here. We'll look at a couple of those today. The library catalog, like it says here, books, videos, and more, um, mostly what you're going to use. Uh, yeah, Sherry, the, the Atlanta Campus Library is open until 2 a.m. Um, we've got the hours here. It's always going to be the current days, hours over here. Uh, that's one of our most frequently asked questions is, is, what time are you guys open? And it's always right here on the home page. And you can click all hours and get a whole uh, calendar and see holiday closings and things like that. So for the most part, what you're going to be using the, uh, the library catalog for is, uh, is probably going to be finding ebooks and maybe some streaming videos as well. Um, if you are close to a campus, you can use this for finding physical books as well. For today, I'm going to be talking mostly about finding ebooks. I'm going to be looking at just stuff you can get to entirely online without having to come to the library. So. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can search the catalog. One is you can go to the library homepage and just click the catalog tab. The other, you can just type in the address gilfind.gsu.edu. It works the same way. You'll see it's going to take you to the same site either way. So I'm going to just use this catalog search box here. Uh, I am working with a class next week that's working on a film project. So uh, I've been thinking about what to show them. So uh, I'm going to show them how to search for books on the, uh, the Alfred Hitchcock film Vertigo. I'm just going to type in Vertigo here, simple search. And I'm finding a lot of stuff here. I've got 400, almost 500 results here. Um, I've got some books. Obviously, the first thing that came up, two out of the three first things that came up are uh, Alfred Hitchcock's. Three of the four first things that came up are versions of the, the Alfred Hitchcock movie Vertigo. Um, let's say I'm out of state or I'm out in Athens or whatever. I can't physically come to the library. Um, I'm, I'm interested in, I've got the movie already, let's say. Uh, I'm interested in uh, books that might mention the, the, uh, the movie Vertigo. So I'm going to check off books, and I'm going to check off full access online. And I just click the Apply button here. There's a lot here that's about other stuff besides the film Vertigo. So I may need to try a different search here. But just as an example, everything that I got here, you can see it's got a little link that says online access. If you see that link that says online access, then I know that whatever it is that I'm looking at, whether it's a book or a video or whatever, that it's got, it's going to be uh, something that I can get to online without having to uh, go into the library. Okay, here's one, for example, uh, Hitchcock's America, if I'm interested in the movie Vertigo that uh, is probably going to be useful to me if, I, if I'm interested in um, uh, researching the Hitchcock film. And if you are just calling in, could I get you to mute your microphone just to cut down on background noise? Thank you so much. OK, so I clicked on the title of the book to bring up the details here. We've got two different versions of the, uh, the ebook available. What I'm looking for is this thing that says full text available. 
and they've actually got the word ebook in the link here, so I could probably figure out that that's an ebook. Click the link, and it's going to take it to me, take me to it. If you are working off campus, you're going to see this login screen a lot. It's going to ask you to sign in with your campus ID. As long as you're off campus, everything that we've got access to, with very, very, very few exceptions, everything that we've got access to on campus, you also have access to off campus. You'll just need to log in with your campus ID and password. This is me. Oh, I just changed my campus ID this morning. I've got to remember what it is now. I think that's right. Let's see. That would have been embarrassing. There we go. Okay. And I've got access to the book here. We get our ebooks from a lot of different companies. So you can always find them by doing that catalog search. All of our ebooks are in the library catalog alongside all of our print books. You search for them the same way. They may look different when you get to the actual book just because we get them from a lot of different companies. This one is from a company called ProQuest. I noticed the other option that's available is from a company called EBSCO. That doesn't really matter all that much, just to be aware that the, the ebooks may look a little different. So the main thing to know here is, let me go back to my results. When I'm off campus, if I'm looking for items that I can get to online, do my search, and I'll probably try some different searches like Hitchcock films, maybe, Alfred Hitchcock. Here we go. Here's some other stuff that I didn't find. There's a lot of stuff here that is available in the library. Um, this one is on Atlanta campus, and it, it's got this available at with a location. But if I'm only interested in online stuff, there's this link over here. It's, it's going to be on the left. We call these um, limiters or facets or what library, uh, librarians call these. But uh, really, the ones that you're going to be looking for are the one that says uh, full access online. That's going to be the biggie if you're only looking for online materials. And I'm getting a lot of videos here, which may be what I want. That was another thing I was going to show you anyway. But if I'm looking for uh, books, I can select what I want here. Let's check off books. And I'm seeing that online access instead of available at Decatur campus, available at Atlanta campus, and so on. These are the main things to, uh, to be aware of. If I, want to, if I change my mind, well, wait a minute. What else do they have? Maybe they have some documentaries about Hitchcock. This is another thing I was going to show you in a few minutes, actually. Um, I can get rid of the books. And it's showing me everything again. And I've got, down here under Format, I've also got Visual. And I don't know if any of these are actually Alfred Hitchcock. But just to give you an idea, um, a lot of what we've got as far as films go are going to be documentaries. We've got some uh, feature films and a few other things as well. So. Um, uh, so I'll uh, just mention that. But a lot of what we've got as far as videos go are, are going to be documentaries. I'm getting a lot of stuff here that says Hitchcock Medical Center, I see. So one of the things that I probably want to do is maybe do Hitchcock Alfred instead, just to narrow down to the director that I'm interested in. And again, full access online. Other things you could narrow it down to. Um, if I'm getting stuff that is too old for a particular topic that I'm interested in, I can uh, narrow down the date. There's lots of other things that I can do here. If I'm getting foreign language stuff and I only want uh, English language, I can just select English here. I've only got English here, so it's not really a problem here. But um, oh, this is interesting. So I got a. Um, Alfred Hitchcock interviewing Ingrid Bergman. This looks like probably a documentary on Hitchcock. Our catalog's a little slow, so I think I'm being impatient with it. Let me just click it and let it. Nope. OK, let me refresh my page and make it a little work.
There we go. Just had to refresh the page to get it to work. And this is in a site called Films on Demand that we'll take a look at in uh, in just a few minutes. But uh, this is one of the places that we get our films. We've got a fair number of uh, streaming videos as well. Remember, not everything that we've got access to, uh, no, excuse me, not all of the books in the library are going to be available as eBooks. Just to get back to eBooks, um, there are options for getting some of our print material scanned and sent to you that I will talk to you about in just a minute. But if you uh, if you can't come to a campus library, this is going to be your main uh, your main way to find books is going to be using the ebooks by selecting that uh, full access online. Um, I do want to mention if you uh, if you are near a campus library, any of these can be sent to any campus. If I'm talking about physical books, I can get access to these from any campus. So if I'm uh, if I live near the Dunwoody campus, even if I'm not taking classes on Dunwoody campus, I could get this book from Atlanta campus sent to Dunwoody campus for me to pick up. And you can see there are other libraries that have it available as well. I could get it sent to me. All I have to do is just click the sign in here. Okay, so Yasmin's asking about online resources, re resources for math learning. Um, I am not, I'll tell you, I am not a, um, uh, a math librarian. I don't work with math classes uh, very much at all. But um, let, me, uh, l let me finish this and I'll, I'll get on to, uh, I'll show you a couple of math, uh, potential math resources that you can use as well. And also, you'll probably want to, uh, to talk to your subject librarian as well. And I'll, I'll mention how to do that. So if I were near the, uh, say I was near the Decatur campus or Dunwoody campus, this book is at Atlanta campus. I just logged in. I can click Request and select whichever campus I want to get it sent to and just click the Request button. It'll get sent to that campus and it'll get held for you. So um, we're going to have, boy, I don't even know how to do a useful math search here, Yasmin, but let me try for, let me just try. Mathematics education, for example. This is going to work with any topic. So if I want uh, online books, let's check off full text access. And when I get to the, uh, uh, the research guides as well, I can show you some, uh, some stuff there. Uh, visual that indicates to me that we've got some, uh, some probably some documentaries available. We've got quite a lot in the way of uh, ebooks. Yeah, we've got over a thousand books online, and I just did a very very simple uh, search for math education, mathematics education. Uh, if I wanted to get more specific, I'd just add some more search terms. Maybe I'm interested in. Um, a particular grade level or a particular field in math and so on. I can just add more terms and get more specific that way. Um, let me talk about, uh, that's, uh, we'll probably revisit the, the library catalog uh, a little bit because uh, I want to show you some, uh, you know what, as long as we're here in the catalog, let's, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about um, videos as well and let's, let's use our math topic as a uh, an example for that. So I don't want books, I want videos as well. We've got, I think it's three main sources for videos. Uh, get them from, from a few different companies. They're all, all of our online videos are listed here in the, um, uh, in the library catalog and I'm going to show you some other ways that you can get to them as well. Um, let's say, for example, I'm interested in this video about uh, early childhood math competencies. Works just like getting to an ebook. Uh, I, I looked for the online access, open the link, and it's giving me, it says full text available. That's just because it's, it's expecting this to be a book. This is actually a video, and I can tell it's a video because it says so here. And all I have to do is click that link where it says available at. And this is going to say probably films on demand or maybe Swank or Canopy. These are um, 
uh, these are uh, uh, just the companies that we get it from. Yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, subject librarians uh, toward the end when I'm talking about where to get help. I'm one. We've got uh, many of us uh, at the downtown campus are subject librarians, and we've got, you know, any librarian can refer you to your, your subject librarian for your major. Um, this is a, just an example of the kind of stuff we've got in the way of um, online videos. Like I said, these are mostly documentaries, and I've got it muted so it's not playing in my headphones. This is this is sort of your library Netflix. It's uh, maybe less interesting than Netflix, but uh, but we've got you know we've got plenty of documentaries. I just picked this one kind of at random. This would be useful, uh, you know, if you're in a, a math ed education class, things like that. Um, again, you can get to these off campus. If I were off campus, it would probably be asking me to sign in, like I had to sign in earlier with my campus ID. Once I'm signed in, it's going to leave me signed in for a while, so I don't have to sign in every single time I click one of these links. I can get to. Let me see, I think if I do feature films, I think I'll get some of the more movie type movies that we can get to. Yeah, and I'll go visual. Here we go. Uh, and available online. I'm finding some stuff about movie production. Um, I've got, oh, Cannibal Holocaust. Let's take a look at that. That sounds great. OK. This is from a site called Canopy that the library subscribes to. Yep, we can handle this. I'm not going to watch much of Cannibal Holocaust, but just to indicate to you, we do have some stuff besides documentaries here. I'm sort of afraid to play too much of it. And I can go full screen. It's probably not looking great over the streaming connection, but uh, we do have quite a few uh, feature films as well as documentaries. I've got, um, I was going to show you this a little later, but let me pull up this site. I'll, I'll look in on this again. This is a, uh, a website that I've put together. Oops. And we'll look at this a couple of times over the next half hour or so. Um, this is where you can get to a lot of these links. This is a guide I put together specifically for folks who are working off campus. And I've got links to uh, our streaming videos here. You can search the catalog for it here. And I've got links to our three main video sites here. Um, there's uh, This is called Swank Digital Campus. Uh, if you just want to browse movies, this is a great way to do it, is to, uh, to go to one of these three links that I've got here. This is maybe a little more browsable than the library catalog. A little slow to come up. Uh, Swank is going to have some uh, feature films, as you can see. These are just, uh, this is a small selection of feature films that we've chosen as useful for, you know, film classes and things like that. It does have some documentaries and things like that, too. Uh, films on Demand is going to be mostly documentaries. Mostly documentaries here. But this is uh, this is maybe a little more browsable by subject. We've got Ken Burns stuff. We've got you know uh, biographies, things like that, and and these are broken down by subject if you're just browsing. And uh, Canopy streaming video. Again, mostly documentaries, but not not entirely. We've got a lot of other stuff as well here. It's mostly going to be documentary type stuff is what we get through the library. But there's a, there's a variety, and you can always search the library catalog. Don't worry too much about remembering how you get to each kind of thing, each different way. I mostly just want to show you that we have these things. Uh, the library catalog is where you're going to search for ebooks and videos. And then the next thing we do, uh, databases, is how we're going to search for articles as well. So just remember that these things exist. Bookmark the library website, maybe bookmark that guide page that we've got, and I'm going to give you lots and lots of options for getting help at the end here. So just remember, we do have these things. 
uh, they're available a lot of different ways through the library sites. I'm showing you a number of different options here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about um, searching for articles. That's, um, I think, if you're doing um, uh, math as your major, uh, things like that, you're probably going to be using articles more often than books. I may be mistaken about that. Um, we've got here on the library homepage below the Discover search, we've got what we call uh, databases. You may have used uh, Galileo at a previous school. Um, I'm going to recommend rather than going to the Galileo website, you use the links here on this page to get to our databases. This is basically going to be the same thing. If you're used to using Galileo to search for articles, this is basically going to be the same thing, but we've got more stuff available on the library site. All of the Galileo stuff is listed here. We've got A to Z links, and we've got subject areas listed here. All of the Galileo stuff is listed here, but also stuff that's not Galileo. So I'm going to recommend using the, the links on the library site uh, rather than do not go to the Galileo site. Nothing wrong with Galileo. You'll just get more stuff if you go through the library website. So if you are a math student, uh, we've got, uh, these are the, the databases that our math librarian has picked out, for example. And I'm trying to remember, Dan Lee, I think, is covering, yeah, is covering math these days. He is uh, what we call your subject librarian for math. Here's Dan. Here's his guides. Um, we've got librarians at the downtown campus that um, uh, that cover uh, all of the different subject areas and all the different uh, uh, major areas that uh, that students are studying in. So uh, yeah. So sure, if you're if you're uh, an undergraduate student taking uh, a math course and you're having to write a paper, you're not sure how to do your uh, how to find sources for your research. Um, if you got in touch with me, I would probably put you in touch with Dan because he's going to know more about math research than I do. Uh, I am the Librarian for Anthropology, so my name shows up on the, uh, the Anthro guides here. Um, like I said, I'm also working with a, a film class this semester. Netta here is our film librarian. And these are just the librarians at the downtown campus. We've got uh, all of the libraries at, uh, librarians at the, the perimeter campuses can help you with all of this stuff as well. So uh, don't feel like you just have to talk to the downtown librarians. You can talk to any librarian, and, uh, and we can help you with any of these research topics. But if it gets too complex, we may refer you to your subject librarian. Let me pop into, um, oh, sorry, let me explain what I'm doing here. Uh, <laughs> back up a step here. <clears throat> here on the library homepage, and if you just go to library.gsu.edu, it's going to take, this is the site it's going to take you to. Uh, we've got this drop down menu that says databases by subject. If you're not sure where to start your research and you're looking for journal articles on a, uh, a topic for you know, a course that you're working on, Usually, a safe bet to start out is just click the drop-down list, find the subject area that you are interested in. So education, you can see the College of Education, we've got it broken out a little more specifically. If you're interested in education research, here's Denise, our education librarian. Uh, I would probably start with the database ERIC, that's uh, our main uh, education uh, resource. If it's one of my Anthro students, uh, I would send them to Anthro Plus as a starting point. And for the most part, we've got a best bet or two, maybe two or three at most, marked up here at the top of the list, just indicating this, this is a good starting place if you're not sure. Just go to, go to the, uh, the subject area that you're interested in, pick it from the menu, and take a look at whatever is under best bets. So if I were uh, if I were that student that's uh, interested in Vertigo, the Al Alfred Hitchcock film, for example, if I weren't sure where to go, I'd go to the uh, the film and media databases here. Uh, I see Netta's contact info with her email. If she, uh, you know, if I if I need some help, I can email her. But I'm going to start with just a search. So what these are, if you haven't used these library databases before, I hope most people have used something like this before. This is basically a specialized search engine uh, that's going to let you search for articles 
in appearing in research journals on whatever subject area. So uh, I know I want film. This has got film right here in the name of it, Film and TV Literature Index. This is going to search film journals. This is going to find me journal articles in the area of uh, film studies. So if I'm interested in vertigo, oops, can't type V-E-R-T-I-G-O. Here we go. I got 1,800 results. I don't want to comb through 1,800 results. I'm probably going to actually narrow that down. So I've got a few ideas of, of how I might want to narrow it down. But, you know, it's always fine to start with just sort of a general search like that. Just take a best guess at your search and scroll through. I see there's a poem here called Vertigo by an author, two authors named Hitchcock. So that's not what I want. I want Vertigo the film, not Vertigo the poem. So maybe I want to put Vertigo film in there, and I go from 1,800 results, whoa, to 300. That's interesting. I could also do Vertigo and Hitchcock. There's a lot of different ways that I could narrow this down. Um, I probably, for a lot of classes, I'm going to need to use only academic journal articles. Now I can see the first few that I got here are marked as academic journal articles. Some of these are just marked periodical. I'm not quite, quite sure what that means. That, that just means it's not a, uh, uh, I mean, I know because I'm a librarian. If I was a, a researcher, I might not know what it means. It just means it's not an academic journal. Um, I can narrow this down either by checking this box that says peer-reviewed or there's a, a box here that says academic journals. They should do the same thing. And that'll give me a, a good selection of, uh, of articles to start with. I'd probably get, if I were teaching you a class on, you know, how to, how to search better, I'd get in a little more detail about how this works. But just to give you the basic idea, um, this, is, this is the kind of thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to take a look at these uh, subject headings, make sure that the, the results I'm getting are, are relevant to me, and then I'll skim the, uh, these abstracts here, just a summary of what the, uh, what the article is going to be about. That'll give me an idea. And a lot of these I can get to just by clicking the, the PDF link here. So for example, if I were interested in this article, Falling into History, I can click the title. That'll give me more details about it. Or I can go straight to the PDF and bring up the whole article. Again, this is available to you off campus as well. Um, the only difference is if I'm working from home, it's going to ask me to log in with my campus ID. But I should be able to get to any of these articles from off campus. Gives me the whole article here. This is a nice long research article, 15, 20 pages here. Um, I can email this to myself if I want to. Um, there's a little button over here if I want to send it to myself an email. I can just put my email address in there. I can go back to my results. I can mark multiple ones and send them to myself all in a batch. I can print them out that way and so on. One thing that's important to note is not all of these articles have a uh, have a PDF link here. Occasionally, well, more than occasionally, pretty frequently actually, you're going to find these uh, articles that don't have a PDF link. Instead, they've got this button that says find it at GSU, or they may have HTML full text. If it says full text, you're in good shape. You can just click the full text link. If it says something like this where it's got find it at GSU, you will see this a lot. All this means is we've got three or four hundred databases. Not every database has every article in full text in it. It might need to link me out to another database to get to it. All it means is if I don't see a linked full text or a PDF full text or an HTML full text, there's this button that says find it at GSU. It may take me an extra click or two. But I'm looking for where it says full text available. Terrific. Oh, keeps moving the link out from under me. This is really weird. There we go. Takes me to it. And in this case, it took me to the table of contents for the journal. Let me find you a better example of that. Usually, usually what it's going to do is something like this.
here we go, full text available, and I know this will work because I tried it out earlier. Be patient with these. Sometimes it takes them a second to come up. There we go. Here's the full text of the article, or I can click there and get a PDF of it. I think my connection's a little slow today. Bear with me. Sorry about that. But it will take me to the article. Here we go. Bingo. We got it. So it may take me a couple of extra clicks. Now, not every article, we, we do not have access to every single article online. We can get them. If we don't have them, we can almost always get copies of them sent to us online. Uh, if I click, occasionally when I click a Find It at GSU, it's going to tell me no full text available, and it's going to link me to something called Interlibrary Loan. Um, that will uh, will let me get to it from uh, from another library, or rather, will uh, our library will request it and send you a copy of it. So just be aware. Start your research early enough because occasionally interlibrary loan can take a couple of days, uh, but usually they're pretty quick, especially with articles. So um, we can get almost any article. We can get almost any book chapter through interlibrary loan, and I'll, I'll give you a preview of, of how that works as well. But that's sort of a crash course in how to search the library databases. You start at the library homepage. You choose the subject area that you're interested in, whether it's math or film or whatever. Usually, there's going to be a, uh, a best bets marked here. If there's not, like in this case, we don't have a best bets marked here, they're just alphabetical, get in touch with us. And I'll, uh, I'll show you several ways that you can get in touch with the library. Either email me as your online librarian or contact one of the reference desks or contact the subject librarian and say, hey, this is what I'm researching. This is the type of source I'm looking for. Where should I get started? And we can send you the right way. So if you don't see a recommendation here, and if your professor, you know, your professor may give you a, uh, a recommendation as well for where to start, but you can always, always contact the library and we will uh, we'll be glad to give you some pointers. That is literally our job to, uh, to help you get started with this stuff. Like I said, there's a lot of options here and a lot of different ways to find things and we know that, so um, uh, don't be shy about asking us for help. That's what we do. So um, that's searching the catalog, that's searching databases, those are the main things, that and uh, streaming video, those are the main things that you will uh, have access to online, and that's most of what you'll need for your research. More and more every year, we can just get you what you need online. There will be cases where um, you can't get what you need for a particular assignment online. Either we don't have it as an ebook, uh, maybe we don't, maybe that's a, a journal article that we don't have access to because we don't subscribe to every journal and we don't have every journal available online. <coughs> but we can get just about any of them. Like I said, uh, we can get stuff from other libraries, we can get stuff sent between GSU campuses. Uh, we can scan stuff for you. Within limits, we can scan stuff for you. I want to make sure that you know about a, uh, a service called Interlibrary Loan, and this is the, the same service that uh, will let you borrow stuff from other libraries, will also uh, let, us, uh, let you get stuff scanned from the library stacks and sent to you if, you are, uh, if you're not on campus. Yeah, so um, if, if it's a, a book, we may be, we may not be able to if you're if you're geographically distant we may not be able to mail you the actual book um, but if you're near a GSU campus we can get stuff sent to any of our campus libraries so it's under services and spaces here on the the library homepage and I really wish that they would put it a little more front and center because this is a really really useful service to know about it's called interlibrary loan and so I'm I'm at the library homepage under services interlibrary loan over here in the right column. And there's some info here about uh, what you can get, how do you make requests, things like that. I'm going to show you right now how to make a request. So what you do, basically this is, this is used for anything that, like it says here, 
anything that's not part of our collections, any books that we don't have, any articles that we don't have. I click Make an Interlibrary Loan Request. It's that same campus ID that you'll use for just about everything. Sorry, I told you I just passed my, uh, just changed my password this morning. So when I log into the interlibrary loan system for the first time, I'll see this screen and it will ask me to fill in my contact info. You only have to do that once. And then over here on the left, this is, this is your power menu over here where it says new request. And uh, mostly what you're going to be requesting if you're, uh, if you're online only, if you're geographically distant from campus and can't come to campus, you'll be using it probably for journal articles and for book chapters. We can get those scanned for you. If you can come to a, uh, a GSU campus library, we can request physical books for you. So basically you can request anything you need over here. Now, um, it's useful to put in a note that you're an online student because what we can do is ordinarily this service is just for getting stuff that we don't own. So if, if there's a book on Hitchcock, if there's a book on math tutoring um, that, I, you know, that I'm interested in that, that our library doesn't have, I can just click book request and they will send the book, they will, they'll order the book from another library, they'll get it sent to the, whatever campus I request as my, you know, my closest campus. Excuse me, and, um, and I can go in and pick it up. Now if I'm out of state, if I can't get to campus, if I'm only, basically if I'm only an online student, in that case we can also scan uh, book chapters that we do own. We can scan articles that we have in the library in print. Sorry, I'm going to mute myself because I'm, I'm coughing. Give me just five seconds, sorry. Sorry about that. My voice is giving out on me. Anyway, if it's something that the library does own, it's useful to just put in the notes field here. Just, just note that you're an online-only student. As long as you're registered for, for online classes, then we can get certain things that are in the collection as well. I hope that makes sense. But anyway, uh, this is a great way to get articles that we don't have. Just click Journal Article. fill in the blanks here. I'll need the uh, the title, the volume, the issue number. If I've already done a database search, then I have all this info. And in fact, if I if I do a database search, there's and I, I discover that there's an article that we don't have, it will give me a link to the interlibrary loan system here. Yes, if it's a if it's a GSU, if it's a book that GSU owns, as long as you are an online student, and this is a, this is special for you guys. If you are only registered for online classes, if you are only an online student, I just got this set up like last semester because I realized that if you are not physically located on campus, if you're not actually coming to campus for your classes, you may not be able to come in and use library resources. Ordinarily, that service would only be for grad students and faculty. So this is a new thing that we are offering to our online students. If GSU owns it, we can scan a chapter and send it to you if you're an online only student. Now, if you can come to campus and pick it up, we can get the full book for you. Just click book, fill in the, basically author and title is the main thing that you need there. Yep. That's interlibrary loan. Um, we can get books, don't forget, we can get books sent to any GSU campus from within GSU library system. If I'm, so I work at Atlanta campus most, uh, most days, if I need something from Decatur, Dunwoody, Newton campus, I can get it sent downtown for me. We can do that and you can, you can also come to any GSU campus library and use it. You can also, as long as you've got a GSU ID card, 
you can go to any University System of Georgia library and use their library and check out books from any University System of Georgia library. You can walk in, if you live in Athens, you can walk into UGA's library and check out books. You'll need a GSU Panther card to do that, but you can do that as well. That is, I see we're, we're coming up on time, so if there are any other questions, go ahead and type them in as I'm getting ready to wrap up, because I've got a few other things that I want to show you about getting help. Let me pop my slides back up just for a minute, and I'm going to show you a few things, oops, a few things on the library website. Go ahead and type in any, any questions you've got, because we've got about 10 minutes left. Lots of ways that you can get help without coming to campus. Uh, research guides. These are web pages that we, me and my colleagues, like this one that I made just for just for you guys, just for the online students. You can get obviously it's a website. You can get to it anytime you want to. Uh, I've got links to online workshops. Here's the one we're having today. Uh, we've got a lot of our workshops on YouTube. This one's going to be up on our YouTube channel within a few days. But we've also got lots of research guides just by subject area. So uh, Yasmin's asking about math stuff. If I scroll down to math, we've got a math guide. You can see here's Dan again. He's our math librarian. So if you didn't know his name, you could get to it from there. Uh, we've got a lot of guides that are specific for uh, particular classes. Just picking some at random here. If you were in English 2121, we've got a guide just for your class. This is going to be customized for the assignments that you're working on. Uh, it's going to have contact info for your librarian that's working with your class or your subject area. You can email and get help. And it's got links to what we usually do is we'll pick out a handful of databases, a handful of resources, and we'll, we'll write up some, uh, some research advice for you to put up on there. Um, we've got, actually I'll show you these in a different order than I have on my slide here. We have a chat service here. This is open five days a week, most days that the, the libraries are open. You can put in your name or leave it anonymous if you want to. It's helpful to let us know that you're a GSU student, and it can be helpful to let us know if you're a perimeter student or Atlanta campus student. You don't have to. And just type in your question here and click Start Chat. I'm not going to do it because it will actually open a live chat. but um, uh, it's that's me or that's one of my colleagues uh, at, at one of the campuses uh, on the other end of it that's going to actually get you in touch with a live librarian tell us what you're working on tell us what you need help with and we can either we can usually give you some research advice right there on the spot we can at least get you some search terms going we can tell you where to search we can get you some links to some useful databases things like that and we can refer you to a subject librarian if you need to as well now if this chat box is offline we're not open 24 hours unfortunately We've got this answers uh, service here. And we've got hundreds of questions that are sort of our most commonly asked questions. Um, fines for overdue books, uh, what are the library hours, how do you know, which libraries can I use, do you have my textbook? Usually the answer is no, but that, that question comes up a lot. Um, how do I find scholarly journal articles, things like that. Um, you can search here. Um, <clears throat> how do I find business case studies? And we've got some links to databases here, things like that. So this is obviously, this is available 24-7 from the website. And um, I work on updating these pretty frequently, so these should be more or less up to date. Um, but these are our most, uh, most commonly asked questions. So there may be the answer to uh, whatever you need may already be there. Uh, I've talked about chatting with a librarian. That's my name, or that's my email, rather. Jason Puckett is my name. That's my email address. I am your online librarian. Um, if you are not sure who to contact at the library, just email me and just say, hey, I'm, a, I'm an online student. I'm not sure how to get help with this. Uh, I will try to help you 
uh, by email or you know send you some advice for what you're working on um, if you want to come to Atlanta campus or when I'm out at perimeter if you want to meet with me in person great but I'm happy to work with you by email um, if you're not sure uh, who to contact I am your first point of contact just write down my email address as long as you're an online student I'm your librarian so uh, so make a note of that um, and you can also um, yep thank you Sherry I just typed it in the chat box um, you can contact any GSU library. There's, uh, we don't care if you're an online student or an in-person student or whatever, just as long as you're one of our students. If you go to the About, all of the different campuses are listed here, all six of our campuses. Um, I'll pick Atlanta just because that's where I work. We've got phone numbers for each campus. There's an email address that will go out to all the librarians, and one of us, whoever picks it up first, will help. Um, We've got, you can text us questions if you need to, and uh, we'll get it that way. There's a chat box here. We've got the hours for each campus. We've got maps for each campus. Let's do, I'm out at Dunwoody today. Phone numbers for Dunwoody. Uh, if you're not sure, where it says research support, that's our reference desk. If you're having any trouble with, uh, uh, with your research, that kind of thing, call research support. If you're not sure how to find something, if you need advice for finding sources, things like that, research support or reference desk. If you need help with uh, checking stuff out or your account or anything like that, that's our user services desk. But if you're not sure, just call either one and we'll put you in touch with the right one. If you're not sure, don't worry about it, just call either one. That's got, again, the hours and the location and so on. But even if you never come to campus, let me just wrap up by saying if you, if you never come to any GSU campus, uh, you are still, uh, we, we still want to do everything that we can to help you. Um, we, you know, just let us know any kind of, uh, any kind of help that you need and let us know any limitations that you've got about traveling to different campuses. Yeah, um, Sherry Ed, I do rotate perimeter campuses. I am, uh, four days a week, I'm downtown at Atlanta and I'm at uh, Dunwoody this week and Clarkson next week and so on. Um, all semester, I'm trying this as an experiment. Uh, a lot of the online faculty are out at the, uh, the perimeter campus, so I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, I'm doing that so I'm closer to them, and uh, it makes it easier for me to work with uh, with some of my, my perimeter librarian colleagues. I can do training and things like that for them. But I'm also more than happy to work with uh, work with students, meet with students out here as well. So yeah, Wednesdays are my perimeter days. Uh, the rest of the week I'm downtown. That's all I've got, and I'm just about out of time here. So I, I didn't see any more questions come in. I'm happy to hang around if there are further questions. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to leave this uh, getting help slide up here on the screen in case you want to write any of this down. Uh, that's my, uh, my online student's guide there. Um, that's got my contact info and basically a lot of the stuff that I talked about today. Um, this was a quick tour. I didn't go into depth into how to do any of these things. Like I said, my goal for today is just that you would know that all of these services exist and uh, if you need help once you get, get into your research and, and need help using them. If you get stuck, just ask for help. Uh, just use the chat box, just email me, uh, just call the reference desk, uh, however you need to do it, just we, we would love to work with you and help with your research. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Sherriette. If there's anything else that you would like me to touch on, uh, I'll be glad to do that. And uh, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for coming out and listening. Thank you so much, Jason, for sharing so much good information with us. And I know two things that stood out to me. You know, when I think about our online students, I really like that there are books and articles that they can access totally online because I know that that will be so helpful yep. to them. That is so great. And then I even I like that that book chapters can be scanned to our our totally online students because like that would be so helpful just you know in our advising communications with students we know that so many of them live outside of the metro atlanta area Absolutely. so they may only come to campus when it is time for a midterm or a final exam 
Yep. We're going to do everything that we can to make your library experience as easy as possible. So we're, we're trying out new things. And like I said, that scanning book chapters for online only students, that's a brand new thing. I, I just pushed our interlibrary loan office, hey, why don't we do this for online students? And they said, yep, you're right. So uh, we really do try our best to make, uh, make the experience for our online students as smooth as possible. And like I said, awesome. I was one myself. So I, uh, I, I, feel, I feel you on the inconveniences sometimes. <laughs> but we're going to do everything we can for you. Thank you so much for coming out. And uh, Sherry, thank you for inviting me to talk today. Thank you. We appreciate you joining us. This was great, Jason. We appreciate okay. it. And Yasmin, thank you so much for hanging in there with, with us the whole time. We had a few other other people who came in here and joined us, and we just like we appreciate you all taking the time to be with us today. And remember, if you all have any questions, reach out to Jason at jpuckett at gsu dot edu. He can answer your questions or get you going in the right direction. Yes, Thank you all so much. We hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.